once around Myra. Myra, Omicron Seti, is in the constellation of the Whale, and not a particularly bright star at its best, but it is a variable, and it's been known since antiquity to have this very weird behaviour, hence the name Myra, as in miracle, meaning wonderful or astonishing. Distance-wise, it's probably around 300 light-years. Some estimates pre-Hipparchos give much lower figures, but we seem to be settling on around 299 as the correct answer these days in terms of distance from the sun. But the main feature of it is that it's a binary star composed of component A, a very late stage AGB star, an asymptotic giant branch star, 20% more massive than the sun, but about 300 times the sun's radius. So truly enormous. It would uh, swallow up the inner part of the solar system in its outer envelope. And that envelope is relatively cool. It's somewhere between 2,900 and 3,200 Kelvin. Um, that's very cold indeed. It's barely red hot, and it varies in colour from a deep red up to a slightly warmer orange colour as it pulsates. And we'll look at the pulsations in a moment. There's also the B star, which is a white dwarf, and we'll come to that last. But the variations have been known since antiquity, really first documented by Fabricius in 1596. But we think the Chinese, Babylonians and Greeks were all over the strange behavior of this star. And it's probably the first truly variable star to be identified that wasn't a supernova, with the possible exception of the eclipsing binary star Algol that varies in brightness, but that's because we ultimately can see two stars or only one rather than the star itself changing brightness. So it was recorded in the 1600s by uh, various astronomers, including Johannes Holwada, that the star resurged in brightness in this 11 month pattern going from invisible magnitude 9 all the way up to a reasonably bright magnitude 3. And the modern period for that agrees at about 332 days. But we think this varies a little bit and may indeed be slowly changing. Now, you see the light curve on the right-hand side there, and these are characteristic of a whole class of what are now called Myra variables. So what's going on inside this uh, rather evolved late stage AGB star is that it is pulsating in brightness. It goes from being a relatively compact small size during the time when it is at its brightest. It's smaller and hotter and giving off lots of visible light that we can see well through the outer atmosphere, which is fairly transparent at this stage. So we see the visible light coming directly to us and the star brightly. But as the pulsation occurs, the star swells up and cools, dropping the, the uh, outer temperature from 3,200 down to 2,900. A lot of the visible light, therefore, goes away and becomes infrared light is still visible but uh, nowhere near as much but crucially the outer atmosphere of the star becomes cooler and cold enough that metal oxides can form as dust so there are things like titanium oxide and oxides of other metals that condense out as individual molecules and dusty grains and this dust blocks that visible light even further. It picks it up, warms up, turns into infrared radiation. So the whole thing is still glowing away in the infrared, but of course we can't see that. So it drops right back to magnitude nine until the pulsation goes through a full cycle back to the maximum compact size with the higher temperature. And we can see those pulsations in this image to the right here. But it's in addition to the 11 month pulsation, it undergoes outbursts, uh, thermal pulses 
taking 10 years, and these occur at around about 10,000 year intervals. And every time it does so, according to theory, then the power output of the whole star ratchets up one notch. And so gradually, this is accounting for it changing over time. I think the image on the right is fantastic with the small, compact, bright orange center, bottom right, and the distended, cool, cherry red uh, top right there. Again, you can see the size of it compared to the Earth's orbit. But we can use these Myra variables as steps on the cosmic distance ladder. This lovely straight line plot tells the story that we can correlate the infrared light output. We have to just look to see how much heat is coming from the star. And we get a period versus luminosity correlation. It's actually a very good one. And so if we know the period, then we can infer the true power output. And if we compare that with the apparent brightness, then we can use the standard candle rule that if it's twice as far away, it'll be a quarter as bright and work backwards to get the distance. So we do this with Cepheid variables very famously, but Myra variables are also turning out to be very important and perhaps a little easier because there are quite a lot of them. Now, it's estimated to be about 6 billion years old, and that puts it right at the end of its life. Within a few million years, the outer layers will have been ejected completely, uh, shells of gas forming a planetary nebula, and it will leave us with the exposed white dwarf. Here's an image taken in ultraviolet light, and you can see a spur of material being emitted by Myra A, which is then spiraling across, uh, of course, attracted by the gravity of its companion, Myra B, the white dwarf. Now, the, the pair of stars together are hurtling across the galaxy very fast, 130 kilometers per second of what's called peculiar velocity. That's very rapid indeed. So it's probably been ejected from a star cluster at some point in its life. Of course, being so old, it's very difficult to trace back exactly where that has come from because things will have been well stirred around the galaxy in the intervening six billion years or so. So it's um, actually a star with a tail. It's creating a 13 light year long wake. In, and you can see that in this lovely photograph, including at the head on the right hand side there, the bow shock as it's pushing its way with its gaseous envelope all hurtling along into the interstellar medium. So this is a star that looks like a comet. Uh, quite fascinating indeed. And you can even look at the nature and the structure within the tail there, seeing the elements that have been ejected, the carbon and oxygen made deep in the core of the star uh, being er erupted and then left behind on its journey. And you can also study the pulsations because you can see that this uh, tail has gaps in it. And so by looking very carefully at that, we can infer the activity of the star because it's written out rather like tree rings for us in the structure of the tail there. Now, I said we'd just talk about Myra B. This is only half an arc second away from Myra A, so very difficult to separate um, in uh, amateur telescopes. Around about 70 to 100 astronomical units for its orbit, taking around 500 years to complete a lap. So uh, it's a very tight orbit, really, although uh, perhaps would correspond to the outer reaches of the Kuiper belt uh, if it was compared to our solar system. Of course, it has to be that far away because Myra A is so huge, it would be swallowed by it. But they are in quite close contact. And this Hubble Space Telescope image shows Myra A on the right emitting a whole lot of material around it and a disk of material accreting onto Myra B. The uh, material that was shown in that spur in the ultraviolet light is spiralling across and 
projects into a disc around Myra B that then falls onto the star. And you can really see that in this picture, which is an X-ray picture, a very, very hot gas, Myra A on the right, material flowing from it over onto the white dwarf on the left, this uh, Chandra X-ray telescope image. Now, that material building up on a super uh, on a uh, type um, on a white dwarf can lead to a type 1a supernova and in this case i think that will probably take a very very long time because myra b is quite modest it's probably about 0.7 of a solar mass and it would have to double that before it was in danger of reaching the chandra seeker limit at which point white dwarfs explode as type 1a supernovae but the mass transfer although very spectacularly shown here is currently likely to take around a billion years or so before it manages to add another 0.7 of a solar mass in terms of uh, the build-up of the white dwarf so i don't think we're in danger of this exploding as a type 1a nearby anytime soon so thanks very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed that one about the pair of stars that comprise the variable star Myra, the miracle star.